Hey friends, Mr. Mark here. So glad you could join me in my classroom as we look at our Bible drill lesson this week. I want you to be ready to memorize a great verse and it's in Job. <laughs> I know. We're going to start those books of poetry. Hey, let's review just to be sure that we can say all these books. Now, I'll look at the chart with you. Would that be okay? Here we go. Let's have a look. So the books of law, if you can say them without looking, look away. Here we go. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. All right. Did you say them all? Give me a thumbs up if you did. Nice. Okay, good. Now let's look at the books of history. Look away if you think you already know them. See if you can say them. Here we go. Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, 1 Kings, 2 Kings, 1 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther. Good. You know, it's like a little bookend. There's these three, and then the first and seconds, and then there's these three down here. It's kind of interesting because the third one is a woman's name, and then down here, the third one is a woman's name, Ruth and Esther. I think that's kind of cool just to see how things kind of organize. The Bible's very organized. So, books of history. Now we're going to add the books of poetry. So let's take a look at the books of poetry, and it starts with right here. How do you pronounce this? <laughs> Did you say job? I know, it looks just like the word job, but they pronounce it Job. I know, it's like there should be an E on the end or something, Job, but it's uh, J-O-B, Job. All right, then Psalms, and it looks like Psalms starts with a P, but the P is silent. So we say Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, <laughs> see if you can say Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes. It's not an easy one. Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon. Sometimes the Bible might even have printed Song of Songs, but we know that King Solomon wrote these, so the, the song, uh, song of Solomon is what we usually clear, uh, say that is. So let's try it again. The books of poetry, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon. Good. I think you're going to do great with this. You're going to have it all down perfect. So we're going to actually take a, um, take a lesson today from, uh, from uh, the Bible, and we're going to learn a verse from the books of poetry. So before we do that, I've got some numbers here. Let's just see if you can choose the right number for the question that I have. Let's see if you can do it. All right, here we go. The number of books of poetry. Do you know how many? <laughs> yep, it's five. There's five. And so it's Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon. So there are five in the books of poetry. All right, let's try the next one. How many books in the Old Testament? How many books are in the Old Testament? Look at all the numbers. Hmm. Are there 66? No. Are there 39? Yes. There are 39 books in the Old Testament. Wow, that's a lot. Okay. All right. How many books are in, are in Old Testament history? We've learned those. Do you see it up there? Are there 27? <laughs> no. Are there 12? Yep, there's 12. 12 of them, a dozen, matter of fact. So there's 12 books in Old Testament history. All right, let's see if we can say them. Here we go. Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, 1 Kings, 2 Kings, 1 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, 
Esther. That's 12. We did them. All right, how about this one? How many books are in the New Testament? How many books are in the New Testament? Are there 66? No, there's not that many in the New Testament. Are there 27? Yep, there's 27 books in the New Testament. That's right. All right, let's look at the next one. How many books are in the entire Bible? <laughs> well, obviously, you're going to pick the biggest number. That's right. So 39 plus 27 is 66. It's a good way to remember that is Route 66. That was a major road from the, from the uh, west to the east, Route 66, and it went right through Oklahoma. So Route 66. So you can remember um, that there are 66 books in the Bible. All right, let's try another one. How many books of law? Old Testament law, how many books? Five? Yeah, that's right. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. That's right, there's five. One more. How many main divisions are in the Bible? <laughs> Would have been easier if I said, how many testaments are in the Bible? Yep, there's two. <laughs> what are they? The Old Testament and the New Testament. Yeah, you've got it. Very good. Well, that's easy enough to do. I'm glad that you're really learning all these Bible skills and that you are getting ready to even practice finding them in your Bible as fast as you can. I want you to be practicing finding those books. Maybe your mom or dad could even give you a book to locate in the Bible and you and set the timer. You at first you might it might take you 20 seconds or 15 seconds, but we want to see if we can do it in 10 seconds or less. And I know you can. I see kids all the time do it. Let's see if you can find those books in the Bible that fast. Okay, well today, our Bible story is about a man named Elijah. Elijah proved to all the people that God is the one true living God. And it made Queen Jezebel so angry. So angry. And she was absolute terror. She was a, a very awful uh, woman. And so uh, Elijah got news that Queen Jezebel had sent out a threat to kill him because she was sick of it. And he was so scared. He was scared out of his head. What was he going to do? And so he decided that he would just start running for his life literally running for his life. And so in 1 Kings chapter 19, we find where he gets this news that Jezebel is out to kill him. And the prophet Elijah begins to run for his life. He ran all the way to a place called Beersheba, which is south of Judea. And he left his servant there <laughs> and he walked all day until he was well into the desert. And when he got into the desert, he just collapsed under the shade of a tree. And while he was there, he prayed that God would just take his life. He hated being this scared. He hated running like this. It was so awful. He was, he was so exhausted. And he just laid down and he fell asleep under that bush in the shade. Well, suddenly, the Bible says that an angel shook him. Wake up. Wake up, Elijah. And Elijah woke up. And the angel said to him, you need to get up and eat because the journey is long and you're not ready for it. And you need to be ready. So God had provided for Elijah. The angel, when he woke up, the angel had put right by his head a loaf of bread, a jug of water for him to eat and to drink. 
and he ate the food and he drank the water and then he fell asleep again. And the Bible says the angel came back and began to wake him up. Elijah, wake up, wake up. And he woke up again and the angel said, the journey is long, it's hard. You need to eat, you need to drink and be ready for the journey. And so he woke up and, and he saw again more bread. He saw more to drink and he, he ate it. He drank the water and then he got up. He felt rested, he felt fed, nourished, and he began walking again. And he walked and he walked for 40 days, Elijah walked. He walked all the way to a place called Mount Sinai. And when he got to Mount Sinai, um, he crawled into a cave there and he fell asleep. And while he was asleep there, God spoke to him and said, Elijah, what are you doing here? Well, Elijah answered, well, the Israelites have broken all of your commandments. They don't follow you as the one true living God. They've broken your commandment and they've torn down your altars. They don't worship you and they've murdered all the other prophets. I'm the only one left. He said, he, he almost felt like he was pleading his heart like, didn't you see all this? It's been so horrible and now they're trying to kill me. And God said, go stand on the mountain. Go stand on the, on the mountain and God will meet you there. So he followed the instruction to go stand on the mountain so that he would be able to meet God and hear what God had to say. And the Bible says that a wind came, such a heavy wind, like a, a hurricane wind came. Have you seen those kind of winds whenever we see hurricanes on the TV screen? Oh, blowing so hard. We know what tornadoes are. A big wind like that came. And the Bible says it was even blowing the rocks. And so whenever the wind came, God was not in the wind. Even though it was a powerful wind, God was not in the wind. And while, and the, the next thing that that Elijah noticed was suddenly there was an earthquake and the ground began to shake and it was loud and it was violent with the earthquake. But God was not in the earthquake. Even though it was a powerful thing, God wasn't in the earthquake. And remember, he's still there waiting to meet God. And after that, Elijah noticed there was a fire, oh, a big fire that came sweeping through, and the fire was bright, it was hot, it was fierce. And following the fire, he didn't hear God. Even though it was powerful, he didn't hear God. And after the fire, he stood there on the mountain, and Elijah heard, a soft, gentle whisper. Elijah, what are you doing here? It was God's voice asking, what are you doing here? And Elijah began to say the very same answer again. He said, the Israelite people, they've broken your covenant. They've broken down the altars. They won't worship you. They've... All of the, the preachers, the prophets, they've been murdered. I'm the only one. Um, and I've been working my heart out for you. And, and, and still, I'm the only one left. And now they, they're trying to kill me. And God said, go back. Go back the way you've come. I am still in control. And I have chosen a new king and a new prophet, and I will follow you. You are not alone. There was no reason to be scared because God was with him. He said, 
I know, God said, I know 7,000 Israelites who haven't worshipped the false god Baal, who still worship the one true living God. You know what? We look for God in those big moments of our life. Maybe it's the hurricane wind. Maybe it's the earthquake or the big fire. We, we expect something major to happen so that we can hear what God wants for us. And then, just like with Elijah, he whispered. God is giving you instruction just like me. And sometimes all we have to do is just be paying attention. Are you reading your Bible? Are you going to church? Because those are moments when we hear God if we're paying attention. We need to pay attention. So our Bible verse today is uh, Job 37, 14. And this is what it says. Listen to this, Job. Stop and consider God's wonders. We need to have ears to hear what God wants us to know. And he's saying to Job, listen to this, Job. Stop and consider God's wonders. Now, what are some wonders that we might think of? Well, I mean, like an earthquake or, or a hurricane. Those are pretty amazing that that kind of thing happens. But what about the wonder of a newborn baby? Wow, have you ever held a newborn baby? It's amazing. This little tiny life that's just getting started. I also think of a wonder as like when you have a friend that you can talk to. That's a really incredible thing. We have to stop and consider God's wonders. Listen to this, Job. Stop and consider God's wonders. Job 37, 14. Now, look at a couple of these games that we have today. I think you're going to like them. This one is actually one of my favorites. And we're going to show you how to play it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Hey, everyone. Thanks for joining me for the week five craft. Well, let's take a look at the first one. The listen and stop. In your packet, you should have gotten a stop sign and also some ears. Now, you've also gotten some colored paper, so you can make the ears and cut them out yourself, or you can do what I do did, which was just to color and go ahead and cut out the things that we gave you. That kind of makes it easier. So one of them, you're going to need a headband. Now, if you're like me and you have a big head, you'll need to add some more, um, some more band to it. So let me go ahead and cut another piece. and tape that together. Any kind of clear tape or masking tape you have at the house should do. And let me measure it. Perfect. Now on the instructions, it says that we want to write the Bible verse, Job 37 verse 14, which says, listen to this Job, stop and consider God's wonders. So I'm gonna write Job 37, 14 on my headband. J O B 37, 14. There you go. I think it looks pretty good. Now I'm going to tape this to make my headband. I'm going to tape it together. Now it's time for the ears. And what I did after I colored them, I also left a little bit of a tab here. I think that'll make it easier to attach to the headband. So I'm going to get some tape. And tape on my big giant ears. Nice. Tape on my other one too. Okay, make sure it's on that side. Perfect. 
Oh, these ribs are so big. All right, next we need our stop sign. So I'm gonna take the popsicle stick and some tape. I'm gonna go ahead and just tape it on the back. There you go. All right, let's see how my headband turned out. Woo, my big floppy ears. Here are my ears, are they nice and big? <laughs> And here's my stop sign. So now, anytime someone says stop, you can say, listen to this, Job, stop, and consider God's wonders.